car YouTubers either obsessively buy supercars or they obsessively buy weird cars. This is a Mini Countryman Cooper S04, but it's not a test car. I actually configured it and I am actually leasing it. Why? Keep on watching to find out. Mini Countryman is an SUV or a crossover on the UK L2 platform, the same which underpins the BMW 1 Series, 2 Series, the Active Tourer, the Grand Tourer, the X1, the X2, the Mini Clubman and a Chinese crossover called the Xenoro 60H, produced by the BMW Brilliance joint venture. If you're a regular on my channel, you may be surprised why of all the cars available on the market, I chose the one that I once called an ugly model range gap filler. They say only idiots refuse to change their minds. My needs and my plans changed, new opportunities emerged, and the market is now flooded with cars that lack personality. So I chose the best-selling Mini, a car which I see a couple of times every day. How unique. Yes, this was supposed to be a truly unique Mini, but more about that later. Let's start with practical aspects which influenced my decision. My partner and I own an NC MX-5 since new. It's a great car and we're even able to pack for vacation in it. However, when we bought it a decade ago and got rid of a compact hatchback and an estate, and I was working for a lifestyle web magazine and I was a radio journalist. Someone paid us when we took vacation. Fast forward 10 years and our vacation is tied to a car review. And even if we don't currently have to film, we vlog, which usually requires taking at least one backpack full of video gear. And in the MX-5, this means either Anna gets to take her cosmetics or me. And so we either stay home or drive a press car. And if we're driving a press car, we take even more gear because we'll definitely be filming something with it. And that's before we get to driving our older relatives to their sanatoria. Yes, it's a thing in Eastern Europe. So the Miata won't cut it. We need a sufficiently big car. Just to be clear, I'm not complaining. I'm just painting a picture here. Speaking of pictures, these cutaways were shot over two days during our three-day mountain trip. It comes with the job and we just needed the right tool for it. For many years, we managed to arrange review schedules so as not to take excessive advantage of my contacts with the press fleet managers. However, recently, we needed to get to the Yaris Cross launch event and pick up a relative on our way back, and we managed only thanks to Hyundai. This only strengthened our resolve to do something about it, and as it turned out, this Mini was already in production. But let's not jump ahead. The boot capacity is really around 450 liters. About 100 is under the floor, which you can leave raised open. Part of the underfloor storage is taken by the picnic bench, but it's enough to store my tripods, lights and other small gear. And since the rear seat slides, it's possible to have up to about 450 liters above the floor at the expense of rear legroom. When considering various car shapes, we noticed that almost vertical hatch is good for protecting you from the rain when we rummage inside the boot. With a more slanted tailgate, you end up having the rain on your back. And we often rummage for gear. Sliding rear seat, I mentioned this already, the backrest splits 40-20-40. It's comfortable enough to carry adults even with the seat slid halfway forward. When we were looking at the Defender 90, which has the most impractical boot ever, I had to do something quickly on my laptop and I noticed the rear doors make more sense than I originally gave them credit for, especially when some of the gear is in the back seat and it's just easier to access it. The mini cockpit is a modern interpretation of the classic. Now, as far as the modern goes, things are not quite as rosy. I specifically ordered the top-level infotainment, hoping for an Android Auto update like on the BMW. 
Yes, but not for me. As far as I understand, I have the new interface, but the old hardware. Mini can sell me the new hardware for 1800 euro, but the authorized dealers are forbidden from installing it on cars delivered to customers with old hardware, or there is some sort of compatibility clash. So I'll either have to keep an old iPhone on the wireless charger to use Apple CarPlay, or I'll have to get one of those aftermarket Android Auto kits. If by any chance you sell and install those, DM me, please. There is a lot of stuff I like here. Good cup holders, adjustable armrest with small storage, three USB ports, large door pockets and a large glove box. The infotainment system is an older version of iDrive with a mini skin on it. Satnav and online services are rubbish, weather updates are sometimes unavailable and Satnav will keep turning you back instead of rerouting. One day this screen is going to be only for Android Auto. It turns out I also have a parallel parking assistant, but I haven't used it even once in real life situation. It comes on automatically at a relatively low speed and before I remember to turn it on manually, I usually pass the parking spot and I just park myself. Practical consumer advice, in the facelifted F60 Countryman, standard seat sliding levers stick out enough to be a problem for shorter drivers sitting close to the dashboard. Optional sport seats have adjustable thigh support and that seems to solve the problem for Anna. Despite about 20 cm different in height between Anna and me, we only adjust the seat front and back, Anna also pushes the steering wheel further away and adjusts the rear view mirror but we make do without the electric seat adjustment with memory function. The seats and the steering wheel are heated. Now, the heated steering wheel was not available on the pre-facelift model. And here, due to the chip shortage, the salesman told me to skip it as well, uh, because I'll just have to wait longer. But I told him I'll wait longer or I'll just cancel the order altogether. Apparently, these days it's even worse. And when you order a car, you don't really know whether you're going to get analog or digital instrument cluster, regardless of what you've ordered. Besides the practical aspects, we also said our car needs to look interesting and be fun to drive. With 60, 70 new cars driven every year, we can't have a dull car sitting in a driveway. We also have an MX-5. So we looked around and within our already stretched budget, there was only the Mini and the Mini. After my last review of the JCW hatch and the Cooper SE electric hatch, I knew the original mini shape is the way to go, but we already have one impractical car and the Countryman has two personalities. It's a shopping cart and a go-kart. A big one. I specifically deleted the drive mode switch, at least it was possible back in May 2021. I'm not about those drive mode changes. The only thing I need to do is to pull the gear lever left and it transforms the car. Oh yeah. The Countryman S means there is still a 2-liter engine under the bonnet. It lost 14 horsepower, but it kept the performance. Well, it should be quicker, but instead of 7.3 seconds 0 to 100 km per hour, I managed 7.8 seconds with launch control. Possibly it has to do with winter tires, ever so slightly moist tarmac and the roof basket. I will try again in the summer, unless I put all-terrain tires on it. All-terrain tires for a countryman? A bit of an overkill, no? And here we get to the unique countryman I wanted. Back in autumn 2020, Mini has put out a press release about the countryman with mods by X-Raid, Mini's Dakar partner. The mods focused on off-road wheels and tires and a slight lift. There were also some mini accessories like this funky roof basket and additional LED high beams, which I had installed on this car. Makes the car stand out a bit. I contacted X-Raid. Without the mini accessories, the mods were about 4,000 euro. Doesn't sound too bad. I'm not going to discuss the spacer lift kit. I'm sure some of you think there are better solutions, but this was supposed to make the car look cool, not get it ready for Baja. X-Rate claimed this will not impact warranty. After all, 
This was an official mini press release, so I didn't expect any problems. Now, when you lease a car, at least in Poland, you have to get permission for any modifications. Mini leasing agreed to the X-rate mods, but in the annex to the leasing agreement, I noticed a bunch of warranty exclusions, namely most of the suspension, steering rack and the all-wheel drive system. Just in case you're wondering, replacing the entire all four all-wheel drive system costs around 20,000 euro in Poland. With labor, so that's all right. Initially, X-Raid wondered whether it's the Polish dealer making problems, but then they went dark on me. Especially after the Mini Global Communications chief threw their Dakar partner under the bus and told me uh, Mini does not endorse the X-Raid mods. Why was it the subject of an official press release then? This remains unclear. All this was happening since May, when I sort of ordered the car and waited on the mods issue to be resolved. I was a bit surprised when I got the call in September to let me know that the car is on the production line. Yes, we needed the car, but it was initially configured with X-Raid mods in mind. Fortunately, the dealer came through and arranged some minor changes once the car arrived. They were mostly simple things like replacing the standard silver alloys with black wheels, still 17s because it's easier to find all-terrain tires for them. There is also the roof basket and additional LED high beams. I don't need them, but they look cool. Also, I have a partial all four pack. We replaced the silver fake intakes and outlets on the front and rear with the standard black ones, but we left the fake skid plates. I think it looks better that way. The roof bars and the basket create some wind whistling sound around 70 80 km per hour, depending on the wind, but driving faster or slower it's fine. I also checked fuel economy with and without the roof rack. On a 30 km test loop, including some city but mostly dual carriageway, the difference was 15%. The faster I drive, the bigger the difference. Realistically, the Countryman S with the roof basket uses around 8-9 liters per 100 km combined. That's better than what I was averaging in the pre-facelift model without the roof rack. The BMW 330i, with a more powerful version of the same engine, is slightly more frugal. By the way, roof rack or without the roof rack, the Countryman is far from quiet inside. Aerodynamics are a bitch. And what about off-road prowess? The reason I decided to get a car with a slightly raised ground clearance and all-wheel drive is for work. Sometimes I review off-roadish cars and I may have to drive another car off the beaten path for tracking shots. With 16.5 cm ground clearance, the Countryman is not an ideal choice, but the X-Raid lift was supposed to take care of that. Well, we can't have everything, can we? Prices of the Mini Countryman start at €27,000. My Cooper S all four with all the options costs about twice that. I did get some discount on dealer installed options when it was clear the X-Raid mods are out, but on a 50 plus thousand car, it's loose change. Due to the semiconductor shortage, my negotiation position was weak and the sales rep did his best to persuade Anna and me that we are making the right choice. It was a pleasure seeing him work and knowing what he was doing. And this is my mini story. It was supposed to be unique, but it turns out I make uniquely curious decisions. At the time of recording this, I've had the car for about three weeks and I've done more than 2000 kilometers in it. I wouldn't mind an inch more ground clearance and I really need Android Auto. This car will be making cameos on this channel during road trips, comparisons, and whenever I discover something interesting using it. This will be over the next few years, obviously. And what sort of options are a must on your car and what could you live without? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.